So they're fighting whatever, and then one guy ends up getting stabbed. And ever since that day, they called him the Golden Donut. Because your donut has to be golden for guys to fight like that over you. Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Slava P, and I'm here to tell you about another jail story that I experienced during my 28 months incarcerated. You can read all about why I ended up in jail by buying my book Bad Trips, which is in the description below. But today's video is going to deal with a subject that a lot of people have asked me about directly or indirectly. It's all about finding love and satisfying lust within the Canadian prison justice system. Someone's asked me, how does it work? Did I see anything? What was the craziest thing that someone asked me? So I'm going to try to condense all that information into one video for you guys at home. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing, drop me a comment, or reach out on Twitter or Instagram. I'm always open to hearing from new people. One thing to remember about Canadian jail is that it's largely made up of immigrants, just like the rest of Canada is. As a result of that, the population is pretty homophobic, because one thing that Serbians, Jamaicans, Somalians, any real like first generation people uh, have in common is that they're not a fan of the gays. This may come to you as a surprise, or it might not, depending on how you grew up. Now, that's not to say that gay people don't end up in jail or find themselves in jail. They absolutely do. They're just like me and you. The question is what they find themselves in jail for. There was a guy I was with in assessment in Joyceville who was a mid-level meth dealer, and he was out and proud, and he said that that was his second time in, and the first time he went in, he actually checked into protective custody because it was too much to handle. This is why on the second time around, he chose not to do that, just for the sake of saying that he went through the whole experience and didn't check in. A lot of that stuff does end up just feeding into ego, so the reason that people make decisions is based on that ego. And in that guy's defense, he only got punched one time, and it wasn't because he was gay. It was because he didn't do what someone told him to do. When I was going to jail, my primary experience with absorbing culture about jail was shows like Oz or Prison Breaks or anything that involved uh, sodomy. But real jail was nothing like that. And that's probably because it was so homophobic because of all those cultures that were there. Nobody even liked joking around about gay shit. I've never seen a room clear out faster than when I put on RuPaul's Drag Race on the main TV. It's a good show. So I was in two minimum security prisons. I was in Pittsburgh, which is the Joyceville minimum security, and I was in Beaver Creek minimum, which is the one up in Muskoka. When you're in minimum security prison, there's no knives that are attached to the wall like there is in medium, where they have the knives on ropes that are pretty much on the wall and you can't get them off, otherwise you get shipped out. So minimum security in Kingston is kind of like suburbs and kind of like a big cul-de-sac with all these townhouses in one big circle. When I got to minimum security in Kingston, there was this rumor about a guy named Bruno who had just got shipped out. Now, Bruno was there for some sex crimes that he committed against someone, but uh, because this was a minimum security prison that specialized in treating pedophiles, this was not really unusual for someone like Bruno to pass through the doors. Bruno got quite the reputation for himself because Bruno would be a guy who would go up to individuals who were incarcerated and he would ask to suck them off in exchange for giving them $90. You have to understand that $90 is the most that an individual can spend in one canteen period. So really, Bruno was offering to top you off in exchange for topping off your canteen allowance for that week. It's a pretty good deal depending on who you ask. Plus, there were rumors that Bruno would actually give the guys a magazine that they could hold in front of their face while it was going on so that they could stare at pictures of beautiful women while he was... Bruno was actually one of two gay guys who was in minimum security at the around the same time that I was there. But like I said, Bruno got shipped out right before I actually landed in Pittsburgh. Why did Bruno get shipped out? Well, there were two gay guys and then a third gay guy entered. Let's just call him Frank. So Bruno took an immediate liking to Frank, as did the other guy who was there. This caused Bruno and the other guy to have words, which eventually led to them having a full-out, like, fight. They confronted each other, and they started slapping each other and fighting each other until Bruno finally pulled out a meat thermometer, and he stabbed the other guy uh, in the thigh, like in the meaty part of the thigh. You're not allowed to do that. Bruno gets shipped out. And the other guy goes to healthcare and he gets bandaged up. He gets in a little bit of trouble as well. But the guy that they were fighting for, Frank, he got the nickname, the Golden Donut. 
because the logic went that anybody who was that worth fighting over had to have a golden donut. There's also some cases that I heard of individuals who had uh, not fully transitioned, but they definitely wore makeup and got breast implants. And they actually preferred to stay at the men's jail because they were cleaning up um, by, you know, getting guys who would pay them to fondle them or pleasure them or whatever have you behind closed doors. I understand that a lot of people think that right now in Canada, all you have to do is walk up to a guard and say that you identify as a woman and that's enough for you to be taken away to the women's prison. That's not true. In my experience, I've only seen one person successfully transition and uh, she was not right in the head to begin with. I think she took her victim's name and was living under that for about five years until she actually got shipped out. She was also shopping off the women's catalog and wearing bras and stuff outside. Ugh, it made people pretty uncomfortable, but uh, I guess my point is that it happens in very rare occasions that people will switch their gender and switch their classification as a result. Women's prisons are way more disgusting than men's prisons because well, if you've ever lived with a woman, you probably know why. Other than those few glaring exceptions that were seared into my memory, there's actually not that much uh, gay stuff that happens in jail because everybody's so goddamn homophobic. In fact, it's so bad that if you are a heavyset man, you will be yelled at if you're walking around with your shirt off because nobody wants to see your titties. All jails are more or less like this in Ontario, but I can tell you that provincial prisons are way worse than this uh, to the point where you can't even shower properly because you have to keep on a set of boxers the entire time. Because the showers are kind of public facing, nobody wants to accidentally catch a glimpse of your meat. And like I've said in prior videos, if you hear the word fire, that actually means that something incredibly uh, gay is happening in the eyes of the person yelling fire. That could be something as subtle as them saying the word banana or it could be something like them seeing uh, an exposed part of your thigh as you're getting out of the shower. Like I said in the Bruno story, there are ways to kind of catch a nut in jail that are all... Uh... <clears throat> like I said when I was talking about Bruno, porn magazines do actually exist, so that's a really big currency for guys who are inside. It definitely does feel like the 90s a little bit because you're walking around with a stack of magazines that you're flipping through, but it's better than nothing. But the highest value item that you could possibly have within prison walls is a DVD, uh, specifically a dirty DVD. The same ones that you will find in any convenience store stuck to the magazine behind that polyurethane sleeve that they put on there. Those are big money. You could probably sell one of those for about two to five hundred dollars if you find the right. Like I said when I was talking about Bruno, porn magazines do actually exist so that's a really big currency for guys who are inside. It definitely does feel like the 90s a little bit because you're walking around with a stack of magazines that you're flipping through but it's better than nothing. The highest value item that you could possibly have within prison walls is a DVD, uh, specifically a dirty DVD. The same ones that you will find in any convenience store stuck to the magazine behind that polyurethane sleeve that they put on there, those are big money. You could probably sell one of those for about two to $500 if you find the right buyer. Most medium security and uh, all minimum security jails have DVD players, so all DVDs are high currency, but specifically the dirty ones. Obviously they check pretty closely for any dirty DVDs coming through the mail, but if you disguise it by, I don't know, putting some sort of sticker from an actual CD over top of the DVD that makes it look like it's a CD, which you are allowed to receive, then you can get it in pretty easily. Not that you should do that. You should follow the rules when you're in jail because the whole purpose is to get out of jail. In my experience, I didn't see any hate crimes or anything of that uh, level happen. Like I said, the guy who I saw get punched didn't get punched because he was gay. He got punched because he didn't do something that someone told him to do. But just because there's no hate crimes going around doesn't mean that it's necessarily a safe space. People will get bullied. People will uh, get roughed up for being gay. But it's not like uh, there are people walking around and enforcing sexuality um, on everybody 
nor are they really like burning pride flags. So that's kind of it. That's how love and lust is handled within the confines of prison in Canada. This has been Slava P. And if you're going to remember one thing from this video, let it be the fact that it's not as easy as CSC's website makes it sound for someone to switch genders and go to another gender's prison. Just because there's a PDF online that says it's so, doesn't make it so. Like, subscribe, check out the description for all the links I mentioned, and I'll see you next time. Let me know what you want to hear a video about next.